Hello and welcome to Fortress Alaska. Yeah, sorry, I've been out for a while, I've had some medical issues, been busy with summer, and the lack of ammo stopped me from doing a lot of the projects I wanted to do. So let's just do a little bit about camping and cast iron cooking. Uh, one of the misconceptions people have is when you go camping, you have to live on hamburgers and hot dogs or other simple foods. Uh, but if you're camping and you're driving to where you're going, cast iron is the way to go. You can basically cook anything you want in a couple of pieces of cast iron. So here I'm just going to give you some basics just to show you some of the things that you can do with uh, cast iron. Um, one of the first things you can do is uh, to cook a, a sausage and broccoli. It's just a simple meal. Uh, what you need is the cast iron um, Dutch oven. I have a 12 inch, as you can see, a large 12 inch cast iron Dutch oven. It works very well for this purpose. I can cook almost everything I need for a family of four in there, often with leftovers for a whole nother meal. Um, so basically you have to set it up someplace you can cook with it. Uh, cast iron Dutch oven and you usually cook with charcoals. And I'll show you more about that later. Uh, you can either use charcoals from a fire or you can just use regular charcoal that you start uh, separately. I always start my charcoal in a charcoal chimney and I plan in the future to do another quick video about charcoal chimneys and uh, avoiding the use of lighter of a charcoal lighter fluid. Just use a charcoal chimney. It's much faster, easier, safer, and you don't have that turn to smell. So uh, the sausage and broccoli is fairly easy. All you need to do is chop up some sausage and broccoli <laughs> and throw it into the cast iron skillet. Then once you have that cooked, uh, and you know, it's cooked to however you like it. I use pre-cooked sausage. So really the sausage and broccoli is edible raw. Um, but you know, cook it to the point where you like your broccoli cooked and your sausage heated up. And then I just add some uh, shredded cheese on top to add some flavor. And uh, then cook it a little bit longer in the cast iron Dutch oven. Now I do cook it with the lid on. I haven't been showing the lid on in these pictures, but uh, I do cook it with the lid on. So, and then once it's all heated up, you know, it's it's good to go and you can eat it. And this is just a small such. The other thing you can do is uh, you can make Dutch oven personal pizzas. Now with the 12 inch pan or Dutch oven, you're limited to a 12 inch pizza basically. These I'm showing are a little bit smaller, just how much dough I had. Uh, but there's really, when you're camping, you want to cheer up the kids or something on bad weather days, make pizza. And you can either use pre-made ones or make them yourself. I make my own. Uh, but so to give you an idea of what you do, first thing you do, because you're doing pizza, is you want the cast iron Dutch oven to be hot. So here you see I line the entire top with charcoals. And then I do the same thing underneath. I go all the way around on the bottom of it. And it's usually about 12 on the bottom and 13 on top. And uh, that's an average. Sometimes there's more, sometimes there's less, depending on how big the actual piece of charcoal are and how tight I squeeze them in there. And it's also weather dependent. On colder days, you're gonna need more charcoal. Uh, often it can be you know, in the 50s or lower if it's a bad weather day here in the summer. Uh, and in the, or it could be, you know, 75. So really your amount of charcoal is weather dependent and cooking time is weather dependent. So anyways, you put the heated charcoals and you get your Dutch oven nice and hot. Uh, and then the next step is you uh, put the pizza in. Now it helps to put it on a piece of uh, tin foil just for getting it in and out. It will cook just fine directly on the bottom. It just makes it a lot easier to lift out of that Dutch oven, which is going to be extremely hot. Um, so here you can just see I made about an eight inch pan pizza. It's just a personal pizza. Everybody gets their own pizza. So, um, and you just bake it in the Dutch oven and you end up with, you know, what you want. And so each pizza is just made to go. So the next step, another thing you can do is uh, something simple, such as barbecue chicken with potatoes. Once again, just simple recipes that you can do in your Dutch oven and it's better than having hot dogs and hamburgers all the time or cold sandwiches. Uh, so with the barbecue chicken, you just cut up the potatoes, throw them in, throw the chicken on top, and then you throw barbecue sauce all over that. And then put the coals on the top and coals underneath and let it cook until it's done. 
and you can see it here we have the coals underneath showing you uh, the heating and here you can see it's fully cooked the potatoes this, this time are tender and the meat's been cooked all the way through and so you have barbecued chicken and potatoes ready to serve up and then here's kind of a dessert kind of a breakfast uh, think of a giant fluff pancake with apple so it's kind of like apple pancake it's a really good breakfast it's also a nice dessert um, it just imagine how much sugar you put into the uh, pancake mix for breakfast i don't put in much sugar but if it's making it as a dessert i'll put more sugar in uh, but it's a simple enough recipe uh, really all you need to do is melt some butter in the bottom and throw some cut up apples and cook the apples for a bit and uh, you just want to get the apples nice and covered in butter and cooking in the pan all nice and hot then you throw in the the batter and uh, it's really just flour sugar and cinnamon and eggs and milk so it's pretty basic it's just you carry the supplies with you if you're camping with someplace you're driving because obviously you wouldn't backpack this in but if you're camping someplace you can drive easy enough to do then you just let it bake it's in it's got the coals on top and then when it's done you have basically a giant pancake that's got apples throughout it as well as cinnamon and sugar and it makes a really good hot breakfast to eat and then another thing you can do is there's no reason for cold sandwiches while you're out camping uh, pie irons you can take along with you if you have a uh, if, once again, if you're driving to where you're camping, or even if you're using a four-wheeler or side-by-side, because -side, a pie iron is um, small and simple to take along, and you can make hot sandwiches. Uh, it really makes a difference on bad weather days. So really, for a pie iron sandwich, basically you have the basic pie iron. Uh, get the higher quality ones. These are C. Palmers, and they are a higher quality. The low quality ones don't last. The, the um, rivets come out. The handles break. Just spend the money if you're going to get one and get a good pie iron sandwich. And basically, you just make any sandwich you would normally eat and then put it inside the pie iron and put it over a fire and let it cook. And then you can get a nice hot sandwich. And as you can see here, uh, you know, some of the bread sticks out. But then when you open it up, you see here this one was cooked with raisin bread. And uh, that's actually an almond butter and jelly sandwich that's been cooked in, in raisin bread. And so that's quite tasty and uh, a nice hot sandwich if it's a cold day. And far better than eating just a cold sandwich. So it makes camping more enjoyable when you have those nice hot meals. And pie irons are great. You can you can even just cook one egg in there if you just want to make a, a cook your, fry yourself an egg. It's a great thing for just frying one egg over a fire. Um, so there's lots of things you can actually do with pie irons, but the sandwiches are the most popular and you can make hot ham and cheese, hot tuna melts, any sandwich you would normally eat that if it is lends itself to being a hot sandwich, you can make it into a hot sandwich. And it, it really is a nice way to have a nice warm lunch. And so and then of course, there's always just the classic burger on a cast iron griddle. Uh, you can... When you do this, you can either cook uh, on a little Coleman stove like I'm using here, or you can use the charcoals. Uh, once again, you can just put it on charcoals. It's cast iron, um, but charcoals take more time. Charcoals, you know, I use for the Dutch oven because you need to. But for a skillet, if you got a, a propane stove, even just a single burner propane stove, you can throw a cast iron skillet on it, or you can put charcoals on it. Or if you don't have either, you can literally just put it in the fire. And I'd like to point out, you can also just put the Dutch oven in the fire if you want to. Just set it near the fire and then put charcoals or coals, hot coals under it and on top of it and cook with it. Uh, you're not going to hurt your cast iron by sticking it in the fire. Uh, so this, you could also just cook burgers right on the fire if you didn't have um, a propane stove or uh, charcoal available. You can just put it over the fire and cook with it. And uh, you can just simple burgers put because yes sometimes people actually want burgers and it does make a nice hot sandwich so uh that's basically some of the basics i plan on doing a another video in the near future with a demonstration of a charcoal chimney and cooking 
with the cast iron. It's just when I'm out camping, I'm usually too busy to sit there and try to do this and I can't do retakes and because I'm making food to feed people. So I don't want to mess around because uh, the meals are an important time and so I don't, I don't want to film it out there. But I plan on doing some demos in my front yard and we'll make a hot sandwich. We'll use a charcoal chimney and we'll show how a Dutch oven works. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying Fortress Alaska. I plan on doing some more gun stuff uh, as soon as I can get my hands on some ammo because that's been my hold back. Uh, and I really didn't want to just keep doing videos that were, you know, sitting at the desk. So anyways, please like and subscribe. And uh, if you can, whenever you buy ammo or firearms, support your local gun shop. They need your support. And for the couple more dollars it costs you, it's worth it to have that local gun shop there. Um, I personally never buy from the big box stores. I always find a local gun shop that has what I need or will order me what I want. Uh, so please uh, always support your local gun shops if you can. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, share if you, if you can. Uh, make comments because it helps for the algorithm. And I do have a Patreon account. Um, that's not really necessary, but if you're interested in helping support the channel, feel free to go there. Uh, so once again, have a nice day. Thank you.